kind of the lapses early on and what did you correct at halftime to make things so much better in second half? Yeah, first first thing I thought, you know, you look at the film, there's a distinct difference in just the edge we played with in the second half versus the uh, first half, we were more aggressive. Uh, probably, I called it probably more aggressive, honestly, in the second half as well. And so that was the biggest thing I, I noticed, and that's really what we addressed with the players is, you, you know, you got to put four quarters together. And obviously, as coaches, we're not absolved from that responsibility. we got to get up that edge to them so they come out of the locker room with it. I mean, it starts with us, obviously, and, uh, and that was the biggest thing I saw. Going off of that, Zach mentioned that there was a lack of intensity coming out of the gate to have, sort of have that you know, eight-game year and how, how concerning was that? Yeah, I think, I think yeah, I don't care if it's eight games in or first game in. There's an edge you have to play this game with. And so, yeah, it's always concerning when you do that, and, and you got to learn from it, and you can't let it happen. You know, and it, it's as simple as that. How do you coach that out of them? How do you get that out of them? Oh, that's, if, if I had that answer right at the moment, I, I would have used it a while ago, right? We're, we're just making sure. I mean, the first thing you do is you try to make sure you go through the leadership on the team, and you understand, hey, what, what, what can we do better? Okay, how can we do this better? And then show them, hey, this is the same play, the same call, whatever it may be. They did, we did. Here's us executing well. Here's us with edge being successful. Here's us not with edge. And so hopefully, you know, that gets through. But ultimately, it's our job to push the right buttons and, and find that. And so that's what we're we're working through. Your thoughts on Deontay Anderson and his play the past couple of weeks? I think he's improving. I think he's improving. There's a play there. Um, I, I honestly, I think it was in the second half. You know, ball goes down the line. He shuffles, squeezes, makes sure quarterback doesn't pull it. Hands off. Turns, accelerates, and launches the body, kind of like he did against Western Michigan on that on that third or fourth down, you know. And so he, he's definitely getting better. Bit of a learning experience for Bryce on that you know, touchdown pass where he kind of just got out of that. And yeah, I, you know, those are things. Those ones I can live with a little bit. I mean, nobody nobody wants to hear a defense quarter setting live with it, but that's just a fact. Man coverage, you're playing man coverage, and the guy goes up and, and uh, makes a play. He makes a play. I mean, that's part of the the. That's part of the risk of playing man coverage at times. And so I'm not going to beat Bryce up on that at all. Uh, he'll learn from it. He'll get better from it. Devin Leary, no stranger to you guys, 21. I know you faced him at NC, against NC State mm -hmm. when they came here. Uh, any carryover from that? What are your thoughts about him as a passer, and how has he even been progressed in the last couple of years? Uh, you know, he's got an unbelievable arm. I mean, that, that is the part. I remember an NC State game, he threw that one shot. He didn't complete it, but, I mean, it, it sailed forever, it felt like. And then you watch him right now. So, some of his incompletions are, are not miss, missed throws. He throws it so hard, guys can't catch it at times. But... You know, you look at what he did against Tennessee. I mean, he was he was on fire, and he's a he's a great quarterback. He has mobility, uh, which is always a, a fear, obviously. Uh, but no, he's obviously progressed as well. You guys were able to get a lot of pressure against Arkansas, not so much against Auburn. What do you kind of make of some of those inconsistencies up front there? Yeah, part of, partly it goes on my, my shoulders. Probably not calling it aggressive enough, uh, especially on that two minute drill. Uh, you know, some of that's on me being more aggressive, you know, but other times, you know, we get stuck on blocks. We dip our head inside when we shouldn't, things like that, that we have to correct as well. No yeah. surprise to see Kentucky have a good rushing attack again. Just, you know, what makes that, that unit for them so, you know, so tough to slow down? I think, number one, that's the identity of their program. I mean, it has been ever since I've been here. You guys have been here a lot longer. Uh, but to me, that's Coach Stoops. That's that entire organization's philosophy is be tough, be physical. Starts to run the football, stop and run, and they do a great job of it. I think they're extremely well coached in the front uh, offensively. They do a great job understanding movement, where it's coming from, where it's going, all that. And then their backs run extremely hard as well. And Liam Cohen's a guy, obviously, it's kind of been back and forth with those guys. I mean, you know, what, what kind of maybe makes him different than the rest of the offensive play callers in this league? You know, I think you see really a true pro feel to it. You know, formations, personnel groups, motions, cut splits, red zone specific routes. I mean, there's, there's an NFL flavor to it, no, no question about it. How we doing? How's it going? Good. Haven't had a chance to look at the game there. What was the difference between the first and second halves where the offense just seemed to find its clue in the second half at Auburn? You know, um, to be honest with you, in the, in the first half, you know, I thought we moved the ball decent. We just we get down there and, and we don't uh, – we can't settle for field goals. We've got to score touchdowns in the red area. And, you know, i got to do a better job having that red area plan. Uh, but, you know, bottom line, um, We've got to be better on third downs, right? Uh, we were poor on our third down, but we get down to the red area. And, you know, in, in today's college football, you got to maximize the possessions. And we get down there, and we, we've got to score touchdowns, and we can't settle for field goals. Uh, so, you know, I felt like we left some points uh, on the field there in the first half. And then, you know, I was, I was proud of the way that they continued to battle in the second half. Uh, but, you know, um, we don't have that much, there's not that much room uh, for error. There's not that much margin for error 
where we can go down and, and just settle for field goals or accept, you know, three and outs. As the quarterback's coach and play caller, I mean, how often do you sit down with Mike and kind of go over what he's comfortable with and what he wants to do? I, mean, I guess basically how involved is he with you when it comes to game planning? Yeah, um, all the quarterbacks uh, are, are involved, but uh, especially situational. You know, on Thursdays we sit down uh, with the quarterbacks and particularly the starter for that week, whoever it's going to be, and talk about, you know, each of these uh, concepts and, and, you know, do you feel comfortable, do you not feel comfortable, and, and we do. We kind of have like a ranking order where I say, hey, man, this concept's going to be really good if they're giving us this coverage, um, but he might not feel great about it or might not feel confident in that throw, and so we move it down. Uh, so we do. We, we sit down and we try to – go through my call sheet uh, and make sure that he's comfortable uh, with, with each of those throws. Um, and like I said, particularly in those critical third down and, and red area situations. As a follow up to that, just uh, how, how, how much is freshman uh, Chris Parson picking all that up? You know, Chris has done a great job of, of picking up the offense. And, um, you know, each week we've tried to kind of uh, limit a little bit and make sure that we're not throwing too much on them. Um, and, you know, once you kind of get in the flow of a season and you start seeing, you know, what the average third and three to six is, how many plays you're getting the average third and seven to ten, you get a little bit better idea uh, because, uh, you, you know, you don't want to carry too much. But Chris Parsons, to get back to your question, has done a phenomenal job. And he's, he's so uh, eager and, and he asks questions. And Will and Mike have got a lot of experience. And he's sitting there asking them, well, hey, how would you read this if it was cover three? Or how would you read this if it was you know, cover two? Ooh, hey, in this third down, they're playing Tampa two. So what should my answer be? Uh, Chris, Chris has done a great job. It's obviously in hindsight and, and coaches across the country who have been in those fourth and one situations. Why, why not go under center there? And, yeah, uh, that's a great question. You know, I, uh, you, you always look back and, and everything that you do, right, you always go back and you evaluate yourself. And, uh, you know, the, the one uh, thing that I would have done different is, you know, uh, taking it out of a, a read uh, hand, you know. Uh, you get there in your second, uh, fourth and short, and the first time they bring Sam and strong safety off the edge. So you've got a little bit of concern that they're going to, you know, be able to get to your running back up there. So trying to hold him and control him uh, on the edge. Um, but, you know, I mean, uh, getting under center is, is something that, you know, uh, obviously, you know, going forward, you know, I've got to do a better job of carrying uh, some of those calls in our plan. I'm How sure you were. swing the momentum of the game when you do miss those short conversions? You know, um, I think the, the momentum right there uh, swung, you know, uh, pretty heavily. And, uh, you know, and there's no one else to blame but me, right? Um, I got I to gotta get these guys in position on those fourth and ones uh, that we got to go convert those. And we've got to get excited about fourth and one when we get in those situations um, about getting those, not, uh, oh, my gosh, it's fourth and one. You know what I'm saying? We've got to attack that moment um, and, and attack that situation. Um, but you know what? Um, it, it, it's one play at a time. And, you know, sure, there can be momentum changes in games, uh, but we've got to get to a point where, you know, it, it doesn't matter. We've got to be able to overcome whatever adversity there is that, that comes. Crew day for Zavion. Uh, what do you make of the way he's just been uh, developing as still one of the younger guys in this offense and coming into his own of late? Yeah, Zavion is an extremely talented receiver, and I was really proud of him and, and some of the plays that he made on Saturday. Uh, you know, he, he's a kid that if the ball is in the air, right, there's a really good chance he's going to come down with it somehow, some way. Um, as soon as he touches the ball, he's got a chance to create explosives. You know, and I see the, his detail in his game improving week by week. You know, the, the detail in his routes and, and setting this guy up and finding the blind spots and getting to his depth. And I think last week he had his best week of practice, um, and that correlated to his best game so far. Mike took the responsibility after the game about so many passes that were just off, maybe a yard out of bounds or not quite delivered on time that should have been big catches, and he took the blame for it. At this point of his career, how do you work on those things to get those balls more catchable? You know, it, it's really um, a timing thing and, and understanding that internal clock and how soon I got to get the ball out of my hand. Um, you know, and, and it is, it, it's split second, right? I mean, it's the difference in, uh, you know, a, a toe touch or not. And, uh, but, you know, Mike's, Mike's timing, I've got no, no, no question on it at all. He's got a strong enough arm. He can accurately place the ball. Um, and, you know, um, I, I've got to do a better job of giving him some concepts that uh, he can get it out quicker. I'm sure you were frustrated more than anybody, but when you see 
a play where Tulu and Xavion run into each other like that. I, what causes that? Yeah, um, you know, it, it was. And, you know, in those situations where, uh, you know, you're in a, a go for it on fourth down situation, you get a little bit um, more aggressive with the call and trying to get a little gadget in. And, you know, really stuff like that is, is more so we've got to do a better job during the week of, of cleaning up those details. And, you know, that goes back to making sure that I'm not, you know, trying to do too much or give them too much. Thank you, guys.